Congratulations on purchasing a Newtone Pure Power Central Vacuum System. Newtone Central Vacuums are up to five times more powerful than upright vacuums and have a large debris capacity so you don't have to empty them often, only one or two times per year. Newtone Pure Power's unmatched filtration ensures that dust and allergens are captured and exhausted outside of your home, helping to improve your indoor air quality. With 86% of contractors recommending Newtone products, we proudly say that Newtone is the preferred choice of electrical pros since 1936. This video will guide you through the installation process for your central vacuum system in a new construction home. We will cover the basic steps to plan for and install your central vacuum system so that it works properly for years to come. Planning is the key to the successful installation of a central vacuum system. Begin by reading your installation manual and gathering the tools and installation materials recommended. Next, plan your system based on the layout and characteristics of your home. In this video, we will be installing the power unit in a ranch style home. The power unit should be located away from the general living area in an accessible position such as a garage, basement, laundry room, or any other area that is dry and remote enough that living areas will not be affected by the sound of the electric motor or exhaust noise. The unit should be mounted so that it is out of the way but still easily accessible for maintenance. If the system is to be exhausted to the outdoors, the power unit should be located on or within 15 feet of an exterior wall. Venting to areas such as decks, patios, and entranceways should be avoided. The power unit must be within six feet of a grounded electrical outlet providing a 120 VAC power source and must have a minimum 12 inch clearance on either side as well as from the ceiling and an 18 inch minimum clearance above the floor. Estimate the number of inlets and feet of piping required for your home by using the central vacuum estimator tool on Newtone.com. You can also refer to the floor plan of your home to accurately determine the quantity of materials needed. Next, choose the locations for your hose inlet valves. Correctly positioned inlets will ensure trouble-free vacuuming and that the central vacuum hose is able to reach every corner of the house with enough slack to go easily around any furniture in the room. Locate inlets within six feet of an electrical receptacle to allow use of optional current carrying hose unless electrified inlets are being installed. Central locations such as hallways, beside doors, and adjacent to the bottom of staircases are ideal. Areas in the middle of walls, behind doors, or where furniture may be potentially placed should be avoided. A 30-foot string, the length of a typical central vacuum hose, can help you easily determine whether you will be able to reach all areas to be vacuumed with that inlet placement. Finally, plan the path of your piping network. The main trunk line connects the furthest inlet valve to the power unit. In the ranch home installation shown in this video, the trunk line runs horizontally along the length of the house through the attic. Alternatively, the trunk line can also be run through the basement. Consult your installation manual for recommended pipe layouts for other house types. Branch lines run vertically through walls and connect the trunk line to the inlet locations. As with the trunk line, branch lines should be kept as straight as possible. Always connect your branch line to the trunk line from a horizontal position or above the trunk line to avoid the accumulation of debris and heavier objects, such as pennies, paper clips, etc., from falling into the branch line due to gravity. Tight 90 degree fittings are only to be used on connections to hose inlets or automatic dustpan inlets. Full size sweep 90, 45, or 30 degree fittings should be used throughout the rest of the piping system to minimize the risk of clogs. Once you have completed your plan, start your installation by mounting the inlet brackets. Measure 18 inches from floor level on the stud you have selected in your plan and fasten the bracket to the stud with screws. After mounting the bracket, glue a short 90 degree elbow to the back connection of the bracket facing toward the location of your planned trunk line. Always apply PVC cement to the back of the mounting bracket rather than to the inside of the elbow. This will be the starting point for the rest of your piping network. After your home construction is finished, you can complete the inlet installation by mounting the inlet faceplates. An automatic dustpan or toe kick inlet is a very popular add-on. These inlets are typically installed under a cabinet in the kitchen, bathroom, or laundry room and allow you to sweep debris directly into your central vacuum system for fast and easy spot cleaning. 
Detailed instructions for installing automatic dustpan inlets can be found in your power unit's installation manual. Once you have mounted all desired inlet brackets, you can install the network of piping that connects your inlets to the power unit. Start the piping network at the inlet bracket farthest from the power unit. Create your first branch line by measuring, cutting, and aligning a length of pipe that runs from the elbow you've glued to the inlet bracket to where the trunk line is planned to go. Before cutting each piece of pipe, measure the length you need. Allow 5 8 inch of piping for inserting into fittings and 1 and a half inches for placing into flexible piping. Cut plastic piping with a hacksaw or pipe cutter, ensuring your cut is square. For flexible piping, use wire cutters or tin snips instead of a saw. After piping is cut to length, use steel wool to remove any burrs from the inside of the cut piping and a file to bevel the outside edge so it will easily slide into the fitting. To ensure a good seal, use steel wool or light grain sandpaper to buff the surface of the pipe that will be glued. To make a joint, dry fit the pipe into the fitting, aligning the two parts as they will be installed. Mark the pipe and fitting so you can quickly realign the joint. Attach a sweep fitting to the other end of the branch line, facing the direction that the main trunk line will run. Once you've completed the branch lines, start the trunk line at the sweep fitting of the farthest branch line from the power unit. Join lengths of straight PVC piping using stop couplings until you reach the next branch line. Connect the branch lines and trunk line together by fitting one end of a small piece of piping to the sweep fitting and the other end to a T that also attaches to your trunk line. The type of T you will use will depend on the configuration of your install. Always make sure the T connects with the airflow going toward the power unit. If you encounter unavoidable obstacles such as a chimney, construct the piping around the obstacle. You can also use a piece of flexible piping to circumvent an obstacle. Continue with the trunk line until you reach the location where you have planned the access hole for your power unit's intake. Stop the trunk line here until the walls of the home have been finished and a two and a half inch hole has been drilled for the power unit's access hole. Once completed, connect an elbow to the trunk line so that it aligns over the intake access hole. You will make the intake pipe connection after you have installed the power unit. When you are satisfied that all fittings and piping are aligned, all cuts are square, and all joints are tight, you can cement the joints. To cement, apply an inch wide band of cement only to the outside of the pipe. Insert the pipe into the fitting with the alignment marks a quarter turn apart then quickly push and turn the fitting to align the marks and spread the cement. Allow one minute for the joint to dry. One of the greatest benefits of central vacuum systems is that the power unit is turned on and off automatically when the hose is connected to a wall inlet. In all systems, low voltage wiring is needed to achieve this. After you have completed the piping system, run the low voltage power wiring along the trunk line starting at the power unit access hole. The wire must be secured to the pipe with quick clips, wire ties, or electrical tape at regular intervals to prevent sagging. Then run a length of low voltage wiring along the branch lines from the inlet lines to the trunk line. Also secure this wiring to the pipe. If you prefer, you can run the low voltage wiring and attach it to the tubing as you lay out the tubing network. Allow for enough wire to be fed past the inlet mounting plate so that it can be connected to the inlet face plate once the walls of the home are completed. At the junction of every branch line and the trunk line, cut the trunk line wire and connect it to the branch line wire. Connect this wiring in groups of threes with one branch wire, one incoming trunk line wire, and one outgoing trunk line wire. Insulate all wire connections with electrical tape. The final step is to mount your power unit and connect it to the piping network. Position the wall mounting bracket to the location you have planned and use the provided screws to secure the mounting bracket to the wall through the upper and lower mounting holes. Be sure to screw the wall mounting bracket directly to a wall stud for a solid installation. Hang the power unit onto the wall mounting bracket. Ensure the back brackets of the power unit are engaged with corresponding wall bracket fingers. Pull the power unit down to secure. The air intake line connects to the right side of the power unit. This configuration can be easily changed to the left side of the unit by removing the screws and flipping the intake 180 degrees before reassembling. Run pipe from the intake access hole to the air intake on the power unit. 
On bag equip models, rotate the bag adapter inside the canister 180 degrees and align the triangle on the intake elbow with the small inclined stud on the bag adapter. Insert the end of the pipe into the power unit's air intake and secure by hand tightening the screw and nut provided. Do not glue this connection. Connect the low voltage wiring to the power unit's low voltage tabs using the included crimp connectors and low voltage harness. If your central vacuum will be vented to the outside, it will require an exhaust line. Exhaust lines work best when limited to 15 feet long or less with minimal bends. When installing model 650, secure the exhaust line to the top of the unit using two screws. Do not glue this connection. Once the construction of the home is completed and the inlet faceplates and power unit are installed, you are ready to use your central vacuum system. Simply open an inlet cover and insert your hose to turn on the system and enjoy quiet, powerful cleaning with your Newtone Pure Power Central Vacuum.